Okay, okay. So I'm reading each sentence and then we will see. All right. I'm reading the first sentence. For the Ishwari Shakti, divine conscious force and world mother become the mediatrix between the eternal one and the manifested many. Okay, so let's have a look at the implications of what he's saying. Now he's saying at the highest level, we have Ishwara Shakti, the consciousness and the power, Chit and Shakti at the highest level. Okay, but now he's talking Ishwari Shakti. Okay, that means to say Shakti at the lower level of the cosmos, but with the Ishwara behind it. Ishwari has become the adjective to Shakti. Shakti is the main. So he is not talking of the highest level, but he is talking of the middle level, the second level where the universe, the universe is both is active. Uh, pardon? Uh, that was Tarika joining. Okay. So, <coughs> <laughs> Archana Ji has muted Tarika. Okay. If Tarika can listen to me, that's fine. So, let's be again very clear about what he's saying. There are three levels, remember. Those three levels is very important. Okay. It, it, it helps a lot to understand. The first level is our level, normal level of ignorance, where we see the multiplicity. The second level is the spiritual planes of consciousness, where the multiplicity is not important it becomes almost illusion and you see the oneness of things. Okay, that's the second level. And this is the level where force is dominant. Okay, because you see everything in the physical world. Look at the stars, look at the sun, look at the planets going around their orbit. This is the Shakti. So this is the Ishwari Shakti when he's talking about it's the second level, not the highest level. The highest level would be Ishwara Shakti. Okay, equal to each other, the Lord and his power and his consort, if you want. You can also think of the, <coughs> the masculine aspect of the divine and the feminine aspect of the divine. Okay, so that is the but, highest level. But why but second here level? Is, Rangada, why second uh -huh. level? Then? Because it is Ishwari, it is second level. No, I didn't yes. understand why second level. Yeah, you, that one small I... <laughs> makes all the difference because the main thing is Shakti, but it is describing Shakti. That means behind Shakti, there is the Ishwara guiding her, but she is the one. Okay. But they are and equal. very clear. But they, are equal. but they are equal. No, then my second. Uh... Are listen, listen, listen. They are equal only at the highest level. Uh -huh. mm. And the second level. The, uh, the world mother, the, when he's saying world mother, is very clear. He's talking of the second level. Okay? Mm. There is no world at the highest level. Okay? It is outside the world. It is the transcendent. Mm -hmm. So, this is describing the Ishwari. Divine consciousness. You know, last time? Yeah, tell me. Last time when we read this whole thing, and you did uh -huh. start sort of explaining, so I have underlined hmm. Ishwari Shakti and I have written level 3 because that time you called it level 3. And oh, you are then, calling it level 2. Okay, then, yeah, because uh, some of those uh, things are not always very easy to understand. But now I am noticing the word, world mother. Okay. In a sense, Ishwara Shakti, is the, but he has made it very clearly Ishwari Shakti. So, and not only that, um, Yasmin, remember that these are not absolutely like, like a staircase, as I said, okay? There is a little bit of everything at the, even at the lowest level, Ishwara and Shakti are always together. Even in matter, they are together. But their proportions go on changing. So, what I said is not 100% wrong, but I think what I'm saying now is more accurate, I think, okay? Ishwari Shakti. Okay, she is the divine mother and is a world mother. There can be a divine mother and a world mother. So, world mother is obviously at the lower level than the <coughs> supermental, okay, or the third level. So, if I have said that, then I must have been very 
it is not very accurate. I must agree with that. Okay. So 124, just one second. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> that means to say that <laughs> even our understanding of Srivanda has to be very, very, very developed. Okay. So, so I think it's more reasonable what I'm saying now because Ishwari Shakti and also world mother. When he's talking of world mother, it's very clear. The world has come into the picture. In the world, is world mother, so Jagan Mata, what we call it. Okay? So he is consciously, mother is conscious and she is a mediatrix. That's also she uses the word. And the very fact that he's using mediatrix, what does it mean? It's something in between the lowest and the highest. Na? So the two words, world mother and mediatrix, make it very clear that it is the second level. <coughs> Doesn't that sound reasonable? <laughs> it is a medium. It is between the two. So, between the eternal one and the manifested many. There you are. The eternal one is the third level and the manifested many is the first level. So, definitely my, um, what I said last time is not very accurate. This is definitely more correct. This, these three words, not the words, even the phrase, between Okay, she is in between the two, so it's a middle term. So, for the Ishwari Shakti, divine conscious force, and world mother, number one, world mother, becomes a mediatrix. She is the one who is mediating between the eternal one and the manifested many. Sometimes he speaks of the priest as a mediator between man and God. Okay, so here also, if you extend that idea, she is the one who will take you to the highest level. That is the reason why we surrender to her in the integral yoga. In other yogas also you surrender to her, but not other systems. But here it is, she is the one who will take you to the highest level. Okay. So these three words, note very carefully, world mother, mediatrix, and the between the eternal one at the highest level and the manifested many at the lowest level. So on one side, by the play of the energies. Now note, the play of the energies obviously is a, <coughs> in the first level. In the first level, there is a play of the energies. Because in the second level, there is not much play of the energies. There is only the potentiality of the play of the energies. Okay, so, Which he brings from the one. She is the one who brings the play of the energies. The, in other words, she is standing in between the one and the many, and she is bringing her power from the one and executing her power in the level one. So she is in between. <clears throat> On one side, by the play of the energies which she brings from the one, she manifests the multiple divine in the universe. Who is the multiple divine? Each of the many. Not only human beings, but even animals and even non um, non, what is it? Non inanimate, inanimate. Even inanimate objects are really the divine, but even at a lower level than the animals, even. Okay. So, <clears throat> you bring manifest the multiple many, uh, multiple divine in the universe. So, in the universe at the physical level, involving and evolving its endless appearances out of her revealing substance. So, <clears throat> the more you imagine these things, it becomes the endless appearances. Everything in the physical world, all the forms are only appearances. And she's going on creating these forms which are temporary and <clears throat> they are only surface appearances. They are only surface, like the clothes that you wear. The man inside is the real thing, but the clothes that he's wearing, okay, are the ones that are disposable. So that's what he's saying. Evolving its endless appearances out of a revealing substance. Revealing substance. <coughs> the matter is a revealing substance here at the end. It reveals that she can make these forms. Substance itself is takes forms, and then it reveals itself. The more you imagine and give meaning to each word, everything starts becoming uh, clearer and clearer. 
this is on the one hand then on the other by the reascending current of the same energy she leads back all towards the that from which they have issued so there is an involution and an evolution that is talking about the first movement is the downward descent the involution she brings the one from the highest level involves it into the lowest level and then starts making forms and evolving these things the consciousness hidden in it up from the appearances to the revealing substance to the highest level so this is what she is doing on the one hand she is making the descent and on the other hand she is ascending again going up ascend and descent descent is the first movement of manifestation and the <coughs> ascent is the liberation the coming out of the prison but the reascending current of the same energies by the reascending current of same energies she leads back all towards that from which they have issued so that the soul in its evolutionary manifestation may more and more return towards the divinity <clears throat> there or here now note that there means at the highest level that would be sriramdha yoga or here in the physical world itself <clears throat> oh, sorry sorry uh, towards the divine divinity there means those who are escaping from the physical world <laughs> yeah i made a mistake again or here means in the physical world you are returning to the that from which you have returned but here in the physical world you are not escaping from the physical world okay <clears throat> our there or here put on its divine character the soul puts on a divine character up there then you are a buddhist and a mahavadi down here you are an orbindonian okay <coughs> or if action the gita's explanation remain in the physical world and get the <coughs> divine consciousness that is possible but the uh, the the difference between the gita and shrimdo is the gita says your soul will be perfect here okay and you will have the consciousness of the soul in the physical world but shrimdo goes one step more and says even the body mind life can become divine the idea of the body mind life becoming divine is not there it is implied but it is not explicitly stated as we have seen in the essays on the gita okay so he is going even beyond the gita there is not in her although she devises now i am reading the next sentence there is not in her although she devises a cosmic mechanism there is a law cosmic mechanism the character of an inconscient mechanical executrix which we find in the first physiognomy of prakriti physiognomy means a face okay so the human face is a physiognomy of prakriti so what you see in the physical world is only the superficial face not the soul of prakriti the nature force there you are nature is a force so he is using both the words nature force and the first what you see of of uh, prakriti the divine force working in nature you see it as a superficial aspect and this is what she she seems to give it a law of inconscient mechanical executrix inconscient and mechanical as we see very clearly the river is flowing there is a law that operates the sun is shining there is a law that operates the wind is blowing again laws of okay the laws of death are the most uh, clearly determinative of this physical world laws are operating okay then the that's what you first see so but he is saying there is not in her this inconscient mechanical energy is not in her but she is executing it okay he is very clearly saying it is not there she is fully conscious the mother divine <coughs> mother although she devises a mechanic cosmic mechanism and you see that mechanism in the the laws of the physical world that's only the first phase that you see the nature force neither is there that sense of an unreality if you go to i go to the divine mother you will not find the sense of unreality okay if you go only through the uh, the gnana yoga and the mayavadin there you will see the physical world as unreal but if you go through the divine mother 
you will not see the physical world you will have the cosmic consciousness and you will not reserve, not you will not reserve um, you will not reject the physical world it will be real to you okay? neither is there that sense of an unreality creatrix of illusions or semi illusions which is attached to our first view of maya when you see the the first view of maya you see a mechanical less remember that shrimp also went by silencing his mind he didn't go in the beginning through the divine mother okay he was told to silence his mind he silenced it and that's why he is also seeing the <clears throat> the physical world as unreal he had the experience of the illusion of the world okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> it is at once clear to the experiencing soul that here is a conscious power of one substance and nature with the supreme from whom she came in other words both is there chit and shakti both are there it is at once clear to the experiencing soul not the senses huh? the soul that here is a conscious power the power is conscious in the physical world we see power as mechanical but actually she is if you go through the divine mother you will see that she is fully conscious of one substance and nature with the supreme the third level supreme from whom she came if she seems to have plunged us into the ignorance and inconscience in pursuing in pursuance of a plan we cannot yet interpret if our forces present themselves as all these ambiguous forces of the universe yet it becomes visible before long that means it takes a little time okay that she is working for the development of the divine consciousness in us and that she stands above drawing us to her own higher entity revealing to us more and more the very essence of the divine knowledge will and ananda so again he is talking of knowledge will and ananda which means the sachid ananda and also he is including essence also so the more the very essence of the divine that means the substance okay and <clears throat> knowledge and that substance is knowledge will and ananda okay even in the movements of the ignorance the soul of the seeker becomes aware of her conscious guidance supporting his steps when you do yoga you realize at one time that there is a divine guidance helping you sometimes you feel are i didn't make the effort i have been aspiring perhaps but suddenly i see that things are which i was aspiring for becomes real okay so you become aware of her conscious guidance supporting his steps and leading them slowly or swiftly it depends on the sadhaka it can be swift or slow straight or by many detours <laughs> detours out of the darkness into the light of a greater consciousness out of mortality into immortality out of evil and suffering towards the highest good and felicity of which as yet his human mind can form only a faint image the human mind is it at the lowest level our normal mind and we can only have a faint image <clears throat> image that also okay thus her power is at once liberative and dynamic liberative means you go out of the physical world and it depends on the sadhak he may see the physical world as unreal or real depending he will see it as real if he has a cosmic consciousness but if he is not got the cosmic consciousness and only the self okay, in the self you can have cosmic consciousness or you need not have it if you don't have it the world is unreal if you have the cosmic consciousness in the self the world is real okay so <laughs> and you see that she is dynamic in other words that there is power and you can change to a certain extent your <clears throat> lower nature your body mind life also you have got some power over it dynamic creative effective okay. you can also create create means change your consciousness from a lower to a higher level and it is effective it can be done creative not only of things as they are but of things that are to be so 
not only what is there today, but even what is there tomorrow also, she can go on creating at the individual level as well as the universal level. Everything that she is capable of manifesting has not manifested yet. So many new species going on, coming up now, so that those things have never existed before. <clears throat> That's what he's saying. Creative not only of things as they are, but of things that are to be. Or eliminating the twisted and tangled movements of his lower consciousness made of the stuff of the ignorance, it rebuilds and new makes his soul and nature. Even the soul has to be new made. Why? Because the soul in the beginning has imprisoned itself on purpose and therefore it is not divine. Okay? Essentially divine but not divine. It has put on too many um, too many veils over itself and nature also into the substance and forces of a higher divine nature. Even the substance changes. That's why uh, yogis experience that their <clears throat> even their bodies are being changed. They realize that the substance itself starts becoming purer and purer. It's like a glass of dirty water which can become cleaner and cleaner. So in other words, your, the glass of dirty water is your body. Not only the vital in the mind, they are subtler, but even the body is, has to be prepared for that. Not in the case of the Mayavadin or the Buddhists. They are not interested in changing the body. They are only aspiring for the higher level. But in Sri Ramadha Yoga, even your body has to be prepared. And in mother's case, the body was prepared in the womb of her mother. Remember, that's a fantastic thing. So, this is what he's saying in the para. Now, we can quickly just one second. Yeah, I'm reading out the summary of what he said here. Okay, to sum it up, the Ishwari Shakti, divine conscious force, world mother, Jagan Mata, is a mediatrix between the one and the many, between spirit and matter, level two, with and through her power and play of Shakti, which she draws from the one, she manifests the myriad personalities in the world, and these are nothing but she herself in her aspect of multiplicity, which is the many. And these forms and personalities that she creates from her subtlest substance, she involves them downwards and evolves them back again upwards to complete the eternal, ever-repeated journey from and into the spirit. We come from the spirit and we go back into the spirit when we are transformed. In this upward journey, the soul in all objects, animate or otherwise, are rediscovering the truth of spirit in the spirit. Although she invents and uses laws and processes, there is no mechanical or unconscious movement in her, which is found in the lowest levels. So, there is neither unreality, nor is there unconscious and mechanical activity in her. In this level, Nature is para prakriti because she is divine conscious power which utilizes her real subtle substance for creative cosmic play. But another question of importance is why does she plunge man into ignorance and inconscience? What is her purpose in doing so? At first, no purpose is seen or discovered. Later, at another higher level, her plan and purpose reveal themselves. She is pursuing <clears throat> a projected plan of adventure from the unknown to the known, from ignorance to knowledge, from the many to the one, from mortality to immortality. Thus, she has power which is both liberative as well as dynamic for transformation. Note, interestingly, liberative means you are coming away from the prison. But dynamic means you are you have the power to even change the prison and make it beautiful. Okay. 
as well as dynamic for transformation liberation from darkness and dynamic descent of light into the darkness below and <coughs> but her creation is not yet ended she created matter life and mind she is still creating and she will continue to create a divine nature in the lowest level of her manifestation this is what he said in the past okay her evolution is not complete she is going on creating remember he said that not only what has been created but what will be created and that what will be created will be the supermaterial manifestation okay so <clears throat> now we can go to the next para <clears throat> shall i read Somebody? yeah please read in this duality in this duality too there is possible a separative experience at one pole of it the seeker may be conscious only of the master of existence putting forth on him his energies of knowledge power and bliss to liberate and divinize the shakti may appear to him only an impersonal force expressive of these things or an attribute of the ishvara at the other pole he may encounter the world mother creatrix of the universe putting forth the gods and the worlds and all things and existences out of her spirit substance or even if he sees both aspects it may be with an unequal separating vision subordinating one to the other regarding the shakti only as a means for approaching the ishvara there results a one sided tendency or a lack of balance a power of effectuation not perfectly supported or a light of revelation not perfectly dynamic it is when a complete union of the two sides of the duality is effected and rules his consciousness that he begins to open to a fuller power that will draw him all together out of the confused clash of ideas and forces here into a higher truth and enable the descent of that truth to illumine and deliver and act sovereignly upon this world of ignorance he has begun to lay his hand on the integral secret which in its fullness can be grasped only when he overpasses the double term that reigns here of knowledge inextricably inter intertwined with an original ignorance and crosses the border where spiritual mind disappears into supramental gnosis it is through this third and most dynamic dual aspect of the one that the seeker begins with the most integral completeness to enter into the deepest secret of the being of the lord of the sacrifice yeah so when we speak of the level 1 level 2 level 3 basis he is also using the same technique the uh, uh, terminology he is saying it is through this third and most dynamic uh, dynamic dual so he is also using that term but not using the word level but is very clear that there are three levels okay so interesting bara so what we will do we will first summarize it then we will start looking at what he is saying because we may run out of time it's already we have got only 10 minutes so this one second it is not Yeah, about it. So, <clears throat> I'm summarizing what he said here. Okay. So, even so, uh, before we start uh, doing the summary, what he is saying is when we are going from the lower level of ignorance to the second level of uh, knowledge which is becoming there is a gradation and ishvara and shakti 
sometimes you can be fluctuating between the two. Sometimes you will see the mechanical side of the Divine Mother and sometimes you will see the consciousness side of the Divine Mother. So there is an up and down movement. Sometimes you can see one, then the other one is less. And when you see the mechanical side, then the Divine Mother doesn't seem to be there at all. Or sometimes you are there in both. That was his possibility. This is what he's saying. Many, many possibilities are there. There is no absolute rule in the spiritual life. There's a gradation. And you can go from one gradation to another gradation. And even there can be a mixture of gradations. That's what he's saying. So I'm reading out the summary of what he's saying here. Even in this duality. So note, even at the second level, there's a duality. You see the Divine Mother. And you also see the mother as mechanical energy. That also is there. Even in this duality of Ishwari Shakti, there is the possibility of separateness between the two. So, on the one side, one may see the Lord, the Master, which is the personal aspect, who issues out of himself the impersonal forces of knowledge, power and bliss. So, you may see the personal aspect of the divine and you see that from the personal aspect of the divine, the impersonal forces, knowledge, power and bliss are coming up. Or it depends on the sadhak, he may see only the impersonal aspects, the knowledge, the power and the bliss and he may not see the Lord who is hiding behind. He may not see, it depends on the sadhaka. Who issues out of himself the impersonal Forces of knowledge, power, and bliss. Chit, Shakti, Anand. To promote freedom for the individual and complete the process of divinization, which is perfection. In this scenario, one may see the Shakti as impersonal. She appears to be a quality of Ishwara nature, okay? Ishwari nature, an attribute of the law. Secondly, then again, in this very same duality of Ishwari Shakti, one may see Shakti as the world mother, Jagan Mata, who issues from her divine substance everything downwards. Gods, planes, worlds, creatures, objects. The third possibility is that the Sadaka sees both together, Ishwara and Ishwari, together. But here, the two are not equal to one another. There is a general tendency to stress one aspect to the detriment of the other. The result of this inequality is seen only as a means to climb to the Ishwara, the master of existence. Then, the sadhaka finds that the power to change the lower towards perfection is limited, not fully dynamic. In these spiritual planes of consciousness level 2, you have power but it's not fully dynamic. Okay, You can't completely. You can change your mind to a certain extent. You can change your vital also. But you can't change your body. To a divine body, you can't do that. From the second level. But the fourth and final case is when both Ishwara and Ishwari are fully involved in each other and the power to act with full effectivity in the physical world becomes possible. The overmind multiplicity with its warring ideas now becomes in the supermental complementary ideas, not contrary. Even at the overmind level, the ideas are all, we have used the word warring, but they seem to be all different, but they are not clashing with each other. There is a certain harmony of opposites. But in the physical world, they become complementary ideas. They are not even enemical to each other. They are both sides of the same thing. That's why all the philosophies are all true in some aspects. Not a single one is absolutely untrue, nor absolutely true. <laughs> okay? <So. clears throat> complementary ideas, not contraries. It is in this last harmonizing consciousness of Ishwara and Ishwari that lies the supreme secret of all existence. It is here that level 2 of the spiritual planes crosses over to level 3 of the supramental substance. Everything downwards, gods, planes, worlds, creatures. 
So, uh, uh, yeah, just one second. We'll do it next time. Yeah. So we note down on the chat, because I don't have internet, you please note down that we have to do this one. Page 125 in this duality too. Okay. Au revoir, everybody. Au revoir. Have a nice day.